Okay, so I thought I'll just share my thoughts uh, via video rather than just typing everything in. Okay, so a lot of you have been asking about R1 RCM. So I've been holding this stock since 2013 and have made tons of mistake, wrote, you know, all the way down to dollar and change and then, um, you know, all the way up to 1617. So I will not go into all the details it will, because it will take a while to explain what happened and transpired. Anyway, so this is Market Smith. This is where I get all my information from. So if I answer your question in WhatsApp, most of the times I look at this screen before answering most of those questions. Now let's just talk about a little bit about R1 RCM. So you can go to their website if you're interested. Normally I would not look at uh, any of these presentations. I will just go based on Market Smith and the price action and volume action. However, since I've been following this company since 2013, I have been following it a little bit more in detail. So this is a presentation, you can access it on their website. Just talks about what they do. So basically they are, they have several different models, but what they do is they manage revenue cycle for the, for nonprofit hospitals mostly. They also have for-profit now, and then they also do acute physician, um, physician market basically. So you can go through all this and read that if you're interested. So they have significantly grown over the years and I'll show you on the other screen, but this talks about uh, how they have a niche in, uh, in revenue cycle and uh, they have grown significantly. They have increased their capabilities and their skills significantly, which is super important as they continue to grow in the market space. So I'm not gonna go through every slide, but they owned, the, they owned this uh, EMS business when they acquired one of the businesses, Intermedics. So they kept the rest, which was their core, and they got rid of EMS business. So that will help them pay down their debt. So they will, I'm pretty sure that all the money is gonna go there. Again, I'm not gonna read word to word on that. Recently, they acquired Revworks. Now, Revworks was a part of Cerner. Now, a lot of you may have heard about Cerner, a much bigger company than R1 and RCM. So, Cerner divested the revenue cycle management to R1 RCM and all their clients would be able to continue relationship with R1 RCM and any any future business clients, non-federal, would have access to R1 RCM as well, So, which is a very big deal. And this talks about that. Then SCI was another acquisition that um, that they did and they they specialize in pre-registration and things uh, and that sort of thing. So again, you can read up if you like. And then this just talks about uh, more details about the industry and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna go into detail here. This talks about the acquisition rationale, which uh, makes sense. Again, if you're interested, you can read in detail. Let's go further down. This just talks about the market and uh, how much more they can grow. This talks about, uh, yeah, I'll just keep that all. So you can see this is where R1 RCM stands. So they are, they are the only pure play compared to all the other competitors down here. They are ones who offer everything. They have three different kinds of models. Modular solutions, meaning you can opt into small modules that you can do just the registration. You can probably have just the module for something else or you can uh, do the whole, uh, you can uh, outsource it to them totally, or you can have their staff and you still have a charge of making uh, decisions. Okay, so this is the contracted uh, book of business. As you can see, three plus, so you can see year two. So gray is margin expansion. So as you can see, this gray area goes into well into 2021. So this means their margin goes up, which will mean their earnings per share will go up. Again, automation. So again, I look at this as a technology company more than anything else. So they have been, uh, just by automation, uh, they will grow margin significantly. And then uh, this just talks into further details on that. And this talks about, you know, uh, whether it's a risk, or value there, they are all set for either or. And you can see the revenue growth over the course of several years. 
and uh, this is the financial outlook uh, you know they are expected to grow their sales by 3 billion every year which i believe is conservative once uh, the covid thing settles down we'll see how much more they can grow okay that's just uh, some information more than i would ever wanted to know uh, in most cases okay so this is the market smith so this is where i get all my information from with uh, any stock before i buy so this right here this area right here this is all the fundamental there is some fundamental here and then the middle part is the technical and then i have my own custom parameters down here uh, you can you can scroll down the line and you can see what i look for so this is where this is what i was going to show you so you can see the sales started accelerating uh, quarters ago now it's actually trending downwards which is not a good sign however knowing the company and uh, you know they will continue to grow 10 percent plus which i think is pretty good for any company growing 10 percent plus is a very it's a very good stable growth now when you look at the earnings this is where it is very attractive because it is going to accelerate its earnings over the course of year over year and quarter over quarter so you can see uh, you know it has been getting better since 17 and you can see it is accelerating positively you come down here you can see they're growing 106 percent 110 percent 225 percent and 133 percent and then i can go here so you can see margin is improving as well so you know overall it's a very very good story you can see here it formed a cup and handle then the market went down right so it corrected with the market now market is much better you know all-time highs so r1 rcm is at all-time highs so this formed a cup so this is where the pivot pivot in you know you can look underneath where it says cup and it has the information there pivot is basically a buy point so it's nothing more than it's just a resistance it's the prior high once broken you know it should become support so you can see the price came down you can draw a line right there you can see the price came down and uh, su was supported there which also coincided with 10 week moving average so again uh, typically when a cup is broken you can see the extension upward in the same length as this and i believe that will take us up to like uh, i don't remember now but it uh, you know i'm uh, if everything goes well i would think this will end up the year around 20 dollars but at least 1750 should be the next stop based on my calculated move when I last measured. Or you can just say 20% from the breakout here. But anyway, so now if you're planning on buying now, let's go to a different chart. So this is what I use because this is what I was trained on. You know, I follow Dan and at Stock Market Mentor and this is what he uses. He uses this Bollinger Bands and I can just see these things better. So. If you're planning on buying, this is the 8 EMA, and that is where I normally would buy uptrending stock on a pullback to 8 EMA. Now, 8 EMA is a very strong momentum stock, okay? So, if you're planning on buying, I would buy, I would look at the 8 EMA every day and see if you can pull back at least to 8 EMA, which is currently at 1549. Now, it may not do that. Instead, this green line may continue to go up price may continue to stabilize sideways and then this will meet here or the price may come down and uh, you know get supported at 8 EMA in most cases and that's where you should have your buy limit okay uh, so I also look at weekly chart uh, which we already saw on Marketsmith monthly I started looking more on that to get a better picture okay let's go back to Marketsmith and uh, so that's what it is all about now when you look on the right side you, you know this is where the funds are right so i want to see it increasing which is not the case but when you look down here you can see this huge volume bar right here and this is because they are going to be entered into s p small cap 600 so th all those index funds they have no choice but to buy this stock because they track the funds so they must have a holding not sure exactly how much but they have to buy and that is where all this volume came in and that is why the stock broke through 
and continue to go up and it is very strong in a weak market so that is about rcm now i am not sure how we how it is going to go nobody knows but this is a small cap growth story and it continues to be very attractive so this is owned uh, the significant amount of rcm is owned by their own uh, client which is ascension it owns about 49 percent in partnership with tower brook that's another investment company and uh, you know i there is another uh, hospital in Salt Lake City, Utah, Intermountain, which is very reputable as well. They own, they own a, I think they own some portion of this, and uh, I think there are other uh, hospitals in the local market as well. That is partnered with R1 RCM, so pretty pretty stable growth story, and uh, you can see if in the future, sort the presentation where you can also look into that. So anyway, I don't know how far it will go. Nobody knows. However, I will be holding this for next few quarters, expecting it to uh, outperform the market, expecting it to appreciate significantly. Now, uh, there is no particular dollar value in mind. I'll just let the price action and volume tell me when it would be the right time to get out. Now, as you probably, if you saw my spreadsheet, if you see my spreadsheet, I'm not sure if you've seen it or not, but I'm significantly higher on this one. I don't exactly know, but 180% gains on this. My cost base is around 550, so. But uh, I think that covers, that covers some of the information on R1 RCM. If you're interested, you can read up and uh, go from there. Uh, I don't know if this is the right one for you. However, I will still be holding this at least through first half of 2022, unless uh, we'll see what happens in elections. Uh, it will matter. It all depends on what they do with capital gains tax and what R1 RCM is going to do. Okay, that's it for now. Hope uh, this helps.